we started as a um, largely as an international program, but we are increasingly focusing on issues in the U.S. The number of police shootings, um, you know, why is that happening? Why are people of color in the U.S. Uh, finding that police departments are, don't seem to be there uh, to protect them, or and it's particularly for young black men feeling like the police are out, out to get them. Dara Byler is the executive director for the Center for Justice and Peace Building. Police shootings of African-American men being killed are increasing. Oftentimes, the men are unarmed. People are beginning to say, wait a minute, what's, what's wrong? Why is it that, that police departments are disproportionately uh, killing young African-American men? Several instances of unarmed men being killed by police have made headlines in the U.S. Breaking through news was there when people poured into the streets during a Black Lives Matter march. Protesters shut down Interstate 94 in Minneapolis in response to police killing Philando Castile during a July 6, 2016 traffic stop. 32-year-old Castile's shooting was recorded on Facebook by his girlfriend, Diamond Reynolds. And just days later, another police shooting led to the outcry by residents in Baton Rouge. Police officers there shot and killed Alton Sterling while they had him pinned to the ground. That shooting was also caught on cell phone video. Byler says the police shootings could be a product of slavery in America. The whole notion that the, the country was founded on the idea that one race is superior to another and that it's okay to to enslave people. The police shootings of African American men is scheduled to be discussed at Eastern Mennonite University in June. Byler says the Center for Justice and Peace Building is doing more work in the United States. One of the exciting partnerships we have is with an organization called Coming to the Table. Um, it was founded on our campus, but they have 26 uh, chapters around the country now. They bring together um, the descendants of slaveholders and the descendants of enslaved people for conversation about how do you heal historical harms and the legacy of slavery in this country. Coming to the Table will host the 2018 National Gathering at EMU. They bring together uh, these descendants of enslaved people and of, uh, of slaveholders and uh, have conversation about what does it look like to heal this historical harm? What, what kinds of reparations are needed? How do you begin to own this long history? And how is that history still playing out today in the incidents like with the police? Uh, how is it that that so many African Americans are incarcerated, way higher percentage than, um, than the percentage of white people incarcerated in this country. But that's not the only racial discussion to be held at EMU. We also have developed a partnership with the Kellogg Foundation, who is doing uh, an initiative called Truth, Racial Healing and Transformation. And again, they are looking at this history of um, what they, they call a hierarchy of human value that the, the country was founded on. And the fact that if you have white skin in this country, it gives you a certain set of privileges that people of color don't have. According to Byler, the Center for Justice and Peace Building wants to be on the forefront of resolving racial discrimination in America. People are beginning to have these conversations and what our center wants to be able to do is is to provide training for communities that are willing to do this hard work of looking at the history of owning it and of creating a better future. In Harrisonburg, Elaine Rackley for Breaking Through News.